beautiful day here in Bristol. Thank you so much for I being with us far. here on First Take. Sun is shining. We are happy to be here with you. We appreciate you all. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, I'm Molly Karam. Gentlemen, how we doing? I'm lovely. I'm how y'all doing? I'm lovely too, Stephen A. How I'm are you? I'm just lovely. Let's get to it. <laughs> Let's roll. Oh, on that note, so you know what it's all about last night. The thunder of the Spurs on the brink of elimination after stealing game five in San Antonio and taking a three to two series lead. OKC trailed by six late in the fourth, but ended the game on a 13 to three run. Russell Westbrook was one assist shy of a triple double with 35 points, 11 rebounds and nine assists. Stephen A, what was your takeaway from game five? My takeaway from game five is that the Spurs looked old very, very quickly. Um, and LaMarcus Aldridge came up small. I mean, he hasn't been getting it done the last three games, certainly hasn't been getting it done in the fourth quarter of the last three games. Meanwhile, Russell Westbrook just reminded the world that there are two superstars on the Oklahoma City Thunder, not just one. Kevin Durant didn't have the greatest game, even though he hit some big shots, but Russell Westbrook was absolutely sensational. And regardless of the eight turnovers, the fact is he showed up when he needed to show up. He made big plays down the stretch his speed his athleticism de his aggression definitely stole the show there were a couple of lapses obviously uh where the san antonio spurs thought a whistle would be blown and sort of relaxed a little bit and russell westbrook that engine constantly churning just kept going and made a couple of plays down the stretch where uh san antonio lollygagged or they thought a whistle would be blown and, it, and that that didn't happen and that ended up being the case i definitely believe uh and as i'm sure skip bayless will accurately bring up he got fouled by Kawhi Leonard. That should have been a foul called by the officials. Russell Westbrook should have been sent to the line for two free throws, giving San Antonio a last shot at a three-pointer to tie and send the game into overtime as opposed to Russell Wilson being in position and ultimately converting a three-point play. That's absolutely true. The referees blew that call. But it doesn't mean that the San Antonio Spurs did not blow the game. There were times where they had it in hand. But in the end, what did I say, Skip, weeks ago when we were talking about the San Antonio Spurs? I said my fear, even though I would pick them in seven in this series because I thought both teams would protect their home court. Uh, you know, other than stealing one early, they would protect their home court in the latter part of the series. What did I say? At some point in time, Amano Ginobili, a Tim Duncan, a Tony Parker, the big three, it would come down to one of those age-old veterans because Popovich is going to rely on them. Tony Parker hit a nice shot from the right wing. Outside of that, he missed his last two or three shots that could have closed the deal. He wasn't able to deliver. Kawhi Leonard wasn't the one taking the shot. LaMarcus Aldridge, who had been missing most of his shots, wasn't the one taking the shots. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put up in. I think LaMarcus Aldridge is big time. Don't get me wrong. As a talent. But he seemed a bit jittery as the pressure waned in the second half of yesterday's game, particularly the fourth quarter I'm talking about here. He seemed a bit jittery. He didn't seem to be himself. Wasn't following through with his normal shot. Didn't look as fluid as he normally looks. And in the end, what it comes down to is this. Oklahoma City, as I've repeatedly say, stated, has big-time talent. What we question is their ability to play together, sometimes defensively, sometimes offensively, overall as a cohesive unit. But the talent is there. The talent showed up last night when it counted most. And unfortunately, San Antonio's big two of Kawhi Leonard and most importantly, LaMarcus Aldridge did not when it counts. And as far as I'm concerned, the results are what they are because of it. I'll go back to your first point. I'm going to give Russell Westbrook his props today. He did a lot of very good things to win that basketball game. Mainly to me, he just played harder and wanted it more than all my Spurs did, including in the end, Kawhi Leonard. I give you that, Russell Westbrook. But as you pointed out, or just sort of swept under the carpet, Mr. Smith, Russell Westbrook had eight turnovers last night, part of 20 Oklahoma City turnovers that included five from Kevin Durant. Late in the game, in the, the final minute and a half of the game, both Westbrook and Durant had huge turnovers that reopened yep. the door for my San Antonio Spurs. One with 127 left by Russell Westbrook, just an unforced error. And then late in the game, 29 seconds left by Kevin Durant. 
Here, Spurs, we give you the game back on your home floor on which you went 40-1 and one in the regular season. My Spurs should have won that game 10 different ways. They were up six with four minutes left. I'm, I, I, I don't want to dwell. I'll get on to this later. But you're right about LaMarcus Aldridge. He still has too much Portland trailblazer in him. That stage got too big for him. He's, he's still not a full-fledged San Antonio big game primetime spur. Not yet. He makes the most money on the team, but he hasn't earned his, so to speak, spurs just yet. And last night, you're exactly right, jittery. Three for 12 in the second half when my spurs were up 13 midway through the third quarter. If he just makes two or three of those little open, and Stephen A, we're talking about open jump shots now. We're not talking about highly contested hand and face jump shots. Open little for him bunny shots, like free throw shots. He only started this series making 33 of his first 44 shots. But when the money was on the line, game five, do or die, no, shrank. Now, here's my point. And the Russell Westbrook lovers and the Spurs haters won't want to hear this. There were actually three blown calls. <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Three blown calls in the final minute of that game. I'm not going to go so far today and say my Spurs were robbed because they had too many chances to close their own deal despite this. But I will say that the reps helped cost my Spurs that basketball game. And you missed the most egregious one with 54 seconds left. Danny Green is running around a pick set by yeah. Steven Adams. And Steven Adams clearly, and he's got some goon in him, he steps back with his left foot and clearly flat out trips Danny Green, if we can see that right now, tripped him. And Danny Green goes sprawling into Kevin Durant, who gets a foul call. Stephen A, 54 seconds left. The game is tied at that point. It should have been immediate offensive foul tripping on Stephen Adams. Instead, Kevin Durant, who's about as lethal a free throw shooter, especially under pressure as I know in the league, he clearly easily steps to the line, makes two, and all of a sudden it's 92 to 90 Oklahoma City. Ball should have been going the other way with my San Antonio Spurs. Would it change the dynamic of the game? I don't know. Wouldn't have hurt my Spurs. And then to your point, six seconds left. My Spurs are in big trouble, and Kawhi clearly intentionally attempts to wrap up Russell Westbrook. How can you not call that foul, number one? That's the first one, but it was double jeopardy because, to Russell Westbrook's credit, he continues to, to rage on to the basket, and as he goes up to dunk it, LaMarcus Aldridge just kind of waves at him because he thinks the play's over. They all just sort of went half speed, and he waves, and they go and one. So instead of Russell Westbrook having to shoot two free throws with his team up one point, he got to shoot one free throw with his team up three points. And he made it and the game was over. Okay, I, I'm not saying raw, out and out all time robbery, but I'm saying those are three what? blown calls in the last minute that dramatically impacted my Spurs ability to win that game. Your thoughts? Well, what makes it what makes it most of first of all, you're absolutely right. I did miss it. I should have brought up that tripping of Danny Green because it was clear, it was flagrant, and there's no way on earth that should not have been called. And what's really, really most annoying is that it's the last minute of a contest. The game is tight. It's a postseason game. It's pivotal. Those are moments where NBA officials simply can't make the kind of mistakes no. that they made. Missing the call against Danny Green. Miss, and Dan, for, 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 to know, you know good and well that the Spurs have to foul. So that's what makes the missing of, of, of the foul call against Kawhi Leonard, them missing making that call, that's what makes it most egregious because there Thank are you. situations where you can nick a guy in that situation and an official will make the call because they know you're trying to intentionally foul because you want to send them to the free throw line. You're hoping that they miss a free throw, but in the event that they do miss a free, that they do make both free throws, you're still in position to tie the game if you hit a three-point shot. How how can professional officials miss 
something so obvious that everybody and their mother know is coming and you're looking for, to miss that is incredibly egregious. So I, I, that's why I'm not going to mess with you today about the Spurs because I, I'm watching and I don't care, you know, you know me, even though I picked the Spurs, I want OKC okay, to win the series because yeah. I want to see Russell Westbrook against, against Steph Curry. But at the same time, and Kevin Durant against, against Steph and Clay and those boys. But at the same time, fair is fair. And I look at San Antonio right now and I'm saying there's no way on earth that those two errors in the last minute of a semifinal series in the playoffs should be missed. It's inexcusable. There's no excuse for it. The NBA should be all over those officials on a day like today because that's that, those are big-time misses. Having said that, again, LaMarcus Aldridge was jittery. And I want to say something here about, listen, we all know Greg Popovich to be a great coach. We all understand that. But let me tell you something. It was, it was incredibly glaring yesterday. Look, the San Antonio Spurs just missed shots because the plays that Greg Popovich was calling, the offense that they were running, the kind of shots he was looking for, they were getting them. Tony Parker had open shots. LaMarcus Aldridge had open shots. And here's why I blame LaMarcus Aldridge more so than anybody else for this particular game, Skip. Tony Parker ended up shooting because he had to. Yeah. Because LaMarcus Aldridge wasn't. If LaMarcus Aldridge was making shot, you and I both know that Popovich would have had his number call. And Tony Parker and those boys would have kept feeding him. But not only was he missing shots, look, we know basketball, all right? No disrespect. We all know LaMarcus Aldridge is a stud. He can play. He was the premier free agent last summer. We get all that. But damn it, he was jittery. It's just that simple. He was. He looked a bit nervous. It wasn't that he was missing shots. He looked tight. Palms got sweaty yep. and, and other parts got tight. And he just looked like the moment, as you would say, was a bit too big for he him. Did. It is just that simple. That is why Tony Parker ended up taking the shots that he took. Danny Green hit six three-pointers. You can't ask for more from him. Plus, he calls it, he stripped Kevin Durant on a key turnover in the last two minutes. Danny, Danny Green was playing defense. Kevin Durant wow. didn't have a great game. He played great defense. He played great offense. He did more than his job. Tony Parker was asked to do more than he should have been asked to do. It was supposed to be LaMarcus Aldridge and Kawhi Leonard who stepped up. Kawhi did in moments, just wasn't consistent. LaMarcus Aldridge was completely absent when it counted most. And if they lose this series, that is what is going to be most memorable as it pertains to the San Antonio Spurs. The fact that he looked a bit jittery when it counted. Six for 21 for the game. Won't get it done, especially at home. Now, to your Kawhi point, we're going to speak later in the show about LeBron James, can I say, reticence in sort of anointing Kawhi as a superstar player. We'll talk about that later. I had some reticence after last night. I don't get this, Stephen A. Smith, and I'll tell you why. In the first half, Kawhi Leonard made eight of 13 shots, and you know and I know in the second quarter, he went Russell Westbrook on, on the thunder. He, he took the game over. He literally yanked the game out of Ibaka's hands. Remember that play in the second quarter? Mm -hmm. It yeah. sort of just switched the momentum of the game and slammed it home. All of a sudden, the Thunder had no answer for Kawhi Leonard. Eight of 13. In the second half, he takes only eight shots and makes four. In the fourth quarter, he takes only four shots and makes two. So on the two key possessions, when the Thunder have said, here, we reopen the door, we hand you the basketball. First Westbrook, then Durant, right on schedule. We've seen them do it before, and they did it again. They were the, the Oklahoma City blunder, not the Thunder, the, the team that can't close the deal. But my team has to go then, take advantage. And Tony Parker, how many times have you heard me over the years talk about this, Stephen A? Dribble, 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 dribble. Tony's not too old. Tony can still do it. You've seen him do it in this series. Dribble, 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 dribble. Nothing. I don't know what they're doing. There doesn't seem to be a plan. And to your point, the shot clock is winding down. One time he just blew the shot clock. But on these two turnover opportunities, he wound up taking a rushed, indecisive jump shot 
that had no prayer, didn't sniff the rim, well, glanced off the side of the rim. Where was Kawhi Leonard on those two plays? I want it in his hands. Well, really? Well, seriously, sometimes I, they just can't stop him from getting to the basket. I, or the free I agree throw with line. that. I, I agree with that, Skip. But again, I have to look at the Spurs, I have to look at Greg Popovich. I have to look at LaMarcus Aldridge more importantly. I ain't worried about Greg Popovich. I look at Greg Popovich because I know that I know about his greatness. But the flip side to all of it is this, Skip. Kawhi Leonard shot 50% in the second half. He had four of eight shots. He had two of four in each quarter. Okay, not enough. So he should, he yeah. should, have, been, he should have been more aggressive. I have to believe if he was not, that has something to do with what Popovich wanted done. When I look at LaMarcus Aldridge, two for 11 in the fourth quarter over the last three games, really? Terrible. That's yeah. just, no, just embarrassing. Terrible. Terrible. I mean, my God. No, no. And you averaging 40 in the first two, and then all of a sudden you fall off the map. And I don't even have a problem with the six for 21. I have a problem for when it occurred. If you went 0 for 15 and hit your last six shots in the fourth quarter, well, then you know what, Skip? You were just off. But it's the fact that he's on, and then it gets tight, and then all of a sudden you can't make shots. Well, I'm, that, that's a choke job. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm saying that's how it's looked upon. And when you consider also the fact, let's skip, it's almost sacrilegious to say this. Tim Duncan's done. It's over. I mean, one for six, 28 minutes. The legs are just not there anymore. The legs and then the spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. And in this case, it's the legs. It's the flesh on his legs. It's just weak. It just seems like it ain't there. Yep. And so when you look at it from that perspective, that puts more of an onus on LaMarcus Aldridge. You got to know. Because, look, the offense is evolving around you right now. You're the, you're the modern-day Timmy. You're the dude with – you're the power forward with the mid-range game, the unprecedented mid-range game. This is what LaMarcus Aldridge brings to the table. And so right now, with them being on the brink of elimination, if they want to force a game seven, I believe in LaMarcus Aldridge's skill. I don't think it will usurp that or the combination of Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook on their home floor in all likelihood. But if the Spurs are going to have a chance, LaMarcus Aldridge is – I know we know what Kawhi Leonard needs to do. That's a given. But he does so much defensively, Skip, and he's efficient enough offensively that you I can sit there and say he is what he is. If you get Kawhi Leonard to be Kawhi Leonard, then you'll be fine. LaMarcus Aldridge has to step up and be that dude. Tim Duncan cannot come to his rescue. It doesn't appear to be the case anyway. I don't want to ever rule out Tim Duncan, but it just looks like Father Time has kicked in his door. LaMarcus Aldridge has to take over. He cannot disappear in the fourth quarter, and he has the last three games. I can't compare those two players, what, what, what roles they play for the team and what Tim used to be versus what LaMarcus is. Offensively, you can. Yeah, a little bit. Although, well, let me just say this. I told you this the other day. If you go back and look at the stats of the Clippers series one year ago, it was obviously in the first round. They lost in seven games at Staples, game seven. Tim Duncan was the best spur on the floor every night of all seven games. He was good to the last drop because he made big shots down the stretch that looked like they were matching CP3, who finally made okay. the runner up over Tim Duncan's defense. The problem this year is lately he's hurt his good knee. He's got two bad knees now. I'm not sure that it's father time has knocked or rapped on his door as he turned 40 years of age. I think his knee is shot. Both are, are now shot. So he has... He, he can still play defense. He can still protect the rim. He can still keep Russell Westbrook occasionally right. from getting to the rim, just on savvy alone. Yeah. But, but I'm with you. I mean, but when I say father time, that's what I'm talking about. Same thing with Kobe. It wasn't that all of a sudden he spry, he's got a spring in his step, and then he gets old. Yeah. Injuries kicked in, and then the body couldn't recover. It's the same thing with Tim Duncan approaching 40. Skip. He's older now. Okay, I and got when it. I say when I say father time, I'm not I'm not talking about his skill. I'm talking about his body has drastically deteriorated. That's okay. all I mean by that. All right. It is what it is. Okay, and now to your point, and I give you credit for this. You you did say going into this series, or if not a month ago, you feared that Pop would ride the big three too much down stretches of these big games like this. I hear you. And you you can laugh if you want. 
But Boban Marjanovic has been a force during the regular season. He should have been playing some minutes of this series because the Thunder crushed my Spurs on the backboards last night. 54 36. Yeah, how about 15 offensive rebounds? It's yep. hard to beat a team when you give them 15 more chances than they deserve to have. So in this That's case, true. like Boban, true. If, he, if he played 12 minutes, you don't think he could bang with Steven Adams well, and take well, a little well, pound well, of flesh from him? You're, you're not going to get any argument from me, but understand what it's a byproduct of because of the play of Tim Duncan. I mean, if you, if you still had Tiago Splitter, I would be in support of him playing yeah. no, because he, he's a bigger body and fresher legs. It's Listen, Tim Duncan can't be on the court for you for 28 minutes nope. right now. He can't. He just, he just doesn't have the legs for it. He just doesn't have the leg. And he seems to know it, even though he's very non-assuming and all of that other stuff. Did, is it just me, Skip? I'll ask you as the ultimate spur lover. Did Tim Duncan not look a little depressed to you being out there? He didn't seem it, – it just – listen, I know he always has his head down and he's focused on doing his yeah. job. I know that. He's great. He's the great Tim Duncan. He just it, – it, it's just like it, – it's the same thing I saw with Kobe from time to time. When you know your body won't allow you to do what you know you know how to do, it's a devastating reality. When it hits you, it's like, damn, I just can't do this anymore. And that's got to hurt. And that's what I saw – Last night. That's I don't what know if I, I saw. Depression, but I saw a couple of hints of embarrassment when he had open sort of basket attacks where he usually no Duncan Duncan would have at least laid the ball in the basket well, and he couldn't even get home to the basket. But, 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 but that's what I mean. Yeah. And I'm seeing the residual impact of a play like that. It's like, damn. I used to be able to do this. This was uh, once you. upon a time yeah. money. That's all I mean no, by that. I, I, I mean, I don't want to be a hyperbolic in terms of depression, right. but I'm just saying it's just knowing your greatness okay. and knowing you know what to do and Still, can't be able to do it. Okay, everything you just said, I hear you, and my Spurs were up six at home with four minutes to go. And, and blew it. And blew it. And, and Oklahoma City turned the ball over 20 times. And listen, you, you can... Look, I'm, I'm not criticizing Russell for this, but this is good for me. This is the, the formula I need to beat the big two of Oklahoma City. I need Russell Westbrook to take 27 shots to Kevin Durant's 21. I'll take that. I, I know he was great in spurts last night, but I'll take that. That's my formula. 20 turnovers with 27 shots by Russell Westbrook. I got a chance because the nuclear weapon is Kevin Durant who looked a little tired in the fourth quarter and was not involved. What was he, one for four in the fourth quarter? He wasn't a factor. So when he's he didn't not need a to big be. factor, what's that? He didn't need to be because okay, he had well, Russell. I got you, but, but I'll take Westbrook. I, I'll, I'll take on that challenge more than I'll take on Durant just getting hot from three or pull-up jumpers. So I, it, it, it's a game on a, if I may, silver and black platter, if I can use the Spurs co uh, yeah. colors this morning, right. because it was right there. Please, please, no. Skip, bottom line, are the Spurs done? No way are they done. They're going to win in seven games. I, I'm sticking by my pick. All right, Spurs in seven. We will discuss it. that in the next hour. We're going to get into that subject. But mm -hmm. tomorrow night, it is game six at the Thunderdome between OKC and San Antonio. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown, charged by due at 7.30 Eastern. On ESPN. Meanwhile, though, coming up next, Dwight Howard joined the crew on TNT last night speaking about his future and commitment to the game. We'll react to what he had to say after the break. Stay here. We're just getting started. I think you like me like that.